Morning, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Uh, it's very good to well, sort of see. I've got about sort of I've got five five screens here and over 200 sort of people, uh, 200 different, different devices on. So it's great to see. You. I'm really really sorry that we weren't able to welcome you here in person. Normally we'd be gathered in the mem hall. There'd be about I don't know just under 400 people in there. We'd be sending you all off on tours around the school. So so my apologies for that. It's just one of those things. We just had to just be a little bit def defensive and protective. Uh, the goal, as you can probably imagine, is get through to the end of this term. Uh, it's, it's been a heck of a long year, and so we didn't want to take any risks either for yourselves or for the school as well. So my apologies for that. Um, at the start of the next term, we always have on the first day just the new third form and the lower sixth in school, and so we devote the entire first day to really helping them to settle in. And we've always done a really nice thing on the Saturday afternoon at the end of the first week to invite parents of, uh, of new pupils to the school to come in for a cup of tea. Um, what we're planning to do is do exactly the same thing again, but start that a bit earlier and give you, the parents, a chance to come for some tours around the school and to get a feel for the place as well. So hopefully before too long, you will actually feel that you've had the, uh, the wider sense of it. Got a variety of things for you this morning. Um, I'm afraid you have to endure listening to me for about 20 minutes or so. I, I always like to, on these occasions, sort of set the, set the tone and to set the scene and to explain not just about what Peters gets up to, but more importantly, why we do things the way that we do. Um, and then we're going to see a short video. It's a, a video that we put together last year for we had to do this um, a virtual induction program then from a couple of pupils, giving you a very informal, sort of effectively a walk about the school and sort of a day in the life of. Um, and then we're going to break off into two different into different parts. So, so for icebreakers for pupils, going through the house system, and a Q&A for parents. And so please do anything at all. So, I mean, it might be really mundane stuff to do with transport or food or something, or it might be more, more complex. But any questions which you have that you'd like to address. And I'll be joined for that by a panel of my senior colleagues um, and also a couple of pupils as well. So please do take the chance to ask any questions. But as I say, I always like on these occasions to try and set something of a flavour about the school that you're joining. First thing I'd like to say is we're delighted, really, really looking forward to welcoming all of you. And I mean that to the pupils as well as to the parents uh, to be part of our, our wonderful community, our wonderful family um, here at St. Peter's. The centrality of our view about education is that we're not here just to produce boys and girls to get them to the age of 18, get them some good exam results and shove them off into the world. Our view is that actually the purpose is a lot deeper and a lot wider. It can be expressed in a simple way by saying that we're in the business of producing amazing adults and reverse engineering that to have a brilliant time at school. So that's where you hear us talking about the four pillars and the four pillars of qualifications, of skills, of interests and values. Because when we think about really impressive people that we meet in later life and really wonderful adults, and you think, well, what, what makes them that sort of a person? We think it's something to do with a combination of all those things. And I'm going to start with qualifications because, of course, we do live in a qualification driven society and getting fantastic exam results is obviously a very important part of that. We're very fortunate. We have a tremendously talented team of teachers here at the school, but we always think that we don't just get brilliant results with the children because we've got great teachers. We get great results because we've got great sparky children in the classroom and because also for us, the academic learning is never confined just to what happens within those four walls. So this is a very big learning community and you as parents will encounter things like a public lecture programme. But as you go through the school, you'll also find all sorts of examples of academic extension and academic societies and sort of trips and visits and so forth that really add to the buzz and the sense of what happens in the classroom. Applications are important, but of course, as we all know, um, but certainly unless you're sort of applying for, for, for a job in a school, by the time you're about 25, people stop looking at your academic qualifications. And it really is about you. So I often say, you know, exam results get you interviews, but it's the person who walks through the door that gets the job. And we also know that so what you need for life is actually a really diverse set of skills and far more than those produced just by the exam system that we have in this country. So when we think about that, we look at, for example, the World Economic Forum, and they produced their Future of Jobs report back in 2018. It's, it's a really fascinating read, both in terms of where they think jobs are trending, but more interestingly, and perhaps more importantly, they've got a fantastic section on skills, and the skills that they say are going to be the most highly prized for young people turning into adults as they go through. And it won't surprise you to know that they're full of all the soft skills. So social influence, leadership, complex problem solving, all of those sorts of skills as well. And you don't get that just from the classroom experience. So that's where the whole skills and interest piece comes in. So Peters is, frankly, the busiest school I've ever known in my entire life. And I love it that way, frankly. Um, you will find that there's the most tremendous range of co-curricular, both in terms of sport, but in terms of music and all sorts of other activities. And this is a really, really important part of way, the way we go about doing life at school. It's also the reason why we need the full six days. If we took away the Saturday or we did a half day on Saturday, we'd have to take things out of the programme. And let's face it, you'll never 
facilitate the academic stuff out of the programme. It's always going to be the fun and the co-curricular and the wider interest that you're going to remove and take away. It would also mean that we wouldn't be able to do things like have a gradated end to the working day on different days, or indeed taking an hour and 20 minutes for lunch to give us a proper break, some downtime and a chance for more activities as well. But that external piece is so important to us. So you will find all sorts are available to you. And one of the great things about Peters is you do not have to be in the top 20% of something to take part and to have a go. We're very well known for our sport, of course, and we do perform at a very high level across a very wide range of sports. And recently, of course, we've had quite a lot of acts of regional and also national success in sport. And in fact, just this morning, sort of in the last hour, I was actually watching YouTube. I was watching um, a couple of our girls live from Henley um, competing in the time trials for, for Henley Royal Regatta at the moment. So, so you will find a most amazing range of sports for you. You'll also find something quite interesting, which is we do not operate on the rigid system of, you know, term one is it's going to be hockey for girls and rugby for boys. You will find that choice comes in right from the get go and you can take part in a wide variety of different sports. I mentioned rowing and there's others that you might want to try whilst you're here and take the opportunity. The other most important thing about the sporting side is the number of teams that we run and that sense of participation and breadth and also fun and enjoyment and sports sitting at the heart of developing that sense of a healthy lifestyle as you're going on through. And that of course brings me across to music and again music is a massive feature of the school so last night uh, i was in in the mem hall just down the corridor from where i'm talking to you now um listening to just frankly the most amazing cabaret concert if that's the one where we sort of say farewell especially to our upper six musicians but earlier on in the year we would normally have been in the minster for our carol service and also for our major concert at the end of the spring term as well and numerous other music festivals music competitions and music concerts as well. So if music is your thing, you will find a home for it. And even if dabbling in music is your thing, you will have a chance. So I always give the example of how the choirs work as a good example, not just for music, but for an awful lot of things at the school. So in the whole school choir, in a school of just about 580, 585 pupils, we have 170 pupils who sing in the whole school choir. So you really can get involved very, very easily. We then have 70 pupils who sing in the chapel choir and a further 20 who sing in the chamber choir and then a boys barbershop group and a girls barbershop group. And it's a wonderful metaphor for how most of you know, the school works extremely well. That chance to take part and participate, but also if you are good about something, you will absolutely fly. So for some of you, maybe it's going to be drama that's going to be your thing as well. And of course, we're extraordinarily well placed here at St. Peter's with York just on our doorstep. I don't know of any other school in the country that's got this most astonishing blend of 50 acres of green space and pretty much all our facilities that we need here at school. Then you come out of the gate, you turn right, and in under 10 minutes, you're in the middle of York with all of the cultural capital that that's got. And of course, our very important connection with York Minster, as well as the art galleries and the theatres and two universities as well. And that also links us into how we get involved. This is not a school with hard, rigid borders. You'll find as parents that this is a school that's quite porous in terms of your ability to get involved and to be engaged with the life of the school and the life of your child, whether that is through things like the public lecture things or coming to concerts and events. And I always say at some point in this address, uh, do not listen to your children. Uh, they may try and tell you that nobody, no other parents come to anything. Don't embarrass me by ever stepping over the gate. Uh, tons of parents do, uh, and we love seeing you as well. So make sure that you do take part in that. So we've got that wonderful setting and all the opportunities that that brings us as well. But then as you look further afield, you have things like the Duke of Edinburgh programme and the CCF. Duke of Edinburgh, it's not compulsory, but every year out of about 110 pupils in third form, about 70 to 75 will take the bronze award. And then about 50 will go on to take silver. And then about sort of 20, 30, 40 will, will go on and take gold. Brilliant experience. And of course, we're very well placed with the Moors and the Dales, not so far away in terms of the expeditions as well. Some of you, um, your parents will say that you love, love to chat and love a good argument. Uh, so some of you will, will love the debating society and the debating competitions, of which there are many. Um, we've had people in the national finals of debating competitions and also in the English schools public speaking competitions as well. So you have those opportunities. You'll also find that we're a very a key partner in the York Independent State School Partnership. And that's a brilliant thing. It's, it's based around 14 schools across the whole of York, both state and independent. And the premise behind it is getting sparky children and sparky teachers from across York and doing things like master classes and extension activities. So again, more chances to really stretch you. 
So that's where the skills, skills and interests come in, because I, you know, I do take the sort of slightly gloomy view, sorry about this, um, that most of you are going to be working for an extraordinarily long period of time. So sorry to dump that on you as a 13 year old, as a 12 year old, but I'm afraid there's a certain truth to it. You've got to have interests that are going to keep you busy and sustained outside your professional lines, because it's there that you'll get your downtime, your headspace, your enjoyment, your physical fitness, your cultural awareness, all of those sorts of things. It's also where you'll get your friendships and your relationships and feel embedded and feel that you have a certain sense of balance in your life as well. So that's the way we like to live our life at school. Yes, exams are important, but through the co-curricula, the skills and the interests that we want you to develop as you go on through. And then the fourth pillar is, of course, values, because anybody can be a success when the sun is shining and the economy is booming. But the reality is life will drop a grand piano on our toes from time to time. And sometimes you need values in terms of giving you the confidence and the chutzpah to give something a go and to take something on. And sometimes you need values to pull back to yourself when life is tough and it's a challenge and you've really just got to sometimes just suck it up and get on with it as well. So that sense of a school that's founded upon strong values. And of course, we do talk about the seven values of Peter's for friendship, trust, hope, wisdom, humility, in, um, indulgence and compassion as well. And they are very, very important values for us as we go through. And you'll see them manifested both in the way that we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, but also you'll see it through the pastoral structure. So I sometimes say that in a, in a busy, so quite complex school like ours, keep things really simple. So we've got the four pillars that sort of guide what we do. And we basically do three things. We do, um, we do the academic, we do the co-curricular, and we do the pastoral. I mean, frankly, we do all three of them very well, but that's the three sort of core things that the school does. So when we can turn to the pastoral, that's what brings me to talk about the, the house system. And the house system is the absolute engine room of the school. It's the most important facet for parents in terms of your, your one-stop shop. And it's through the house system that we oversight the personal development, the academic development of all the children. And the house sort of gives you that sort of sense of a further one grouping of people that you're going to be with. And tutoring is really, really important. So we've made some changes to tutoring to actually about treble the amount of time that we spend each week on tutoring. And when you start in the third form, you'll have one sort of third form tutor group to sort of bed you in and to get you settled in as you go through there with a, with a tutor attached to you. And as you go on into the fourth and the fifth form, what we've done is we take the fourth and fifth form in a house and we divide them into thirds with a blend of fourth and fifth formers. And that means that we've got a, a ratio of about one to 10, one to 12 on the tutoring front. And it also means we have the opportunity for peer mentoring as you go through. And tutoring at Peters, it's all about adopting the coaching model of tutoring. So it's not just about spotting your academic development. Tutoring is where we have the chance to pull together everything about your personal development and where that is from time to time, looking at the Davos skills, as I sometimes call them, and thinking about where you're going, what might you be tackling coming up next, what have you got on the horizon, your GCSE choices to make or A-level choices or career thoughts. And so tutoring is, is the glue, if you like, that gums all of that in together. And the idea being that you then sort of take that on as you go through into later life to turn you into a reflective person with the capacity and the ability to think about yourself and think, how are things going as you go through? So the house is very important, but it's only one facet of your life at Peter's. You effectively, you have th the minimum of sort of three identities, if you like, and house is one of them. And you will find things like in-house competitions and your friendship groups that you develop there. But then you've also got your membership of the third form, your membership of your year group. And through the classroom settings and through all the co-curricular activities, that's what throws you together with tons and tons of different people as you go on through. And your third sort of persona or identity, of course, is you are a Peterite. You're part of that much bigger family of being part of St. Peter's as a school. And it's that that nurtures you through. So as you go through the next five years, and then you start thinking about up and out and thinking about future lives and future pathways, that's the sort of structure which keeps you going and sets you up for life. And of course, when you finish, um, you then become an, an old Peterite. And that's a, a network of about 6,000 or so people um, spread regionally very strongly, but also all over the country and indeed internationally as well. And the old Peterite um, is such an important way of keeping in touch with the school, whether it's through sporting events or social events and things like old Peterite day, the Sunday before the, a new term begins at the start of the academic year. Those are the times when we all feel very gathered together as a family. Commend at the end of next week would normally be a time when we see old Peterites with us in, in the Minster as well, and likewise uh, in, the, in the carol service in the Minster as well. So there are the ways in which you, you never actually stop being a Peterite. And this is why we sometimes talk about the keys in terms of the cross keys, you know, the, the keys for life as being very important. And the house system is very important, as I say, but also massively important is the engagement of families. And so I will keep on harping on about this to you, the parents, 
do, do come and take part in your child's life at school. Come and take part in the life of the school. It's been really lovely in the last half, sort of half term or so, we've been able to open up the doors again and have parents back on site for things like, um, for, for concerts like last night, but also attending fixtures. And some parents have actually become, not, I wouldn't to say totally sort of emotional, I'm not, saying, not saying anybody's sort of broken down in tears on me, but you can see the difference it's meant to them to have been just physically back at the school again and feeling engaged and feeling part of it. So do, do take that opportunity. And also take the opportunity to work with us and communicate. If you've got any concerns or any questions, just keep them coming and keep that sense of not just a two-way, but actually a three-way partnership. You know, the child, the school, and the parent as well. We often do what I sometimes refer to as tag teaming the teenager um, or co-parenting the adolescent, because let's face it, teenagers are brilliant and they do amazing things and it's just blistering watching all the fantastic stuff they get up to. Um, but I'm also, uh, let's, let's have a reality check. Uh, no one in my experience got from 13 to 18 on a straight line graph. Uh, I often say it looks a bit more like a piece of spaghetti thrown against the wall of a student kitchen. And that sometimes life doesn't go perfect and doesn't go great. And actually that's when our engagement together really, really matters and makes a great deal. And as I say, the sense of tag teaming as we go on through. Um, you know, the, I've, I've been doing this job for what, 25 years now, I suppose. Uh, you could sort of put the combined collective wisdom of people here at school in terms of adolescence and the plasticity of the human brain and so, you know, excitement things and things, but also not very often I have to say, but when things don't go quite so well or not quite as we all expected, there's the most tremendous resource for you here at school, but of course we can't do it without you and your knowledge of your child and your engagement. So please, please do take that opportunity to really be involved with us. We also have a fantastic friends group called the called FOSP, which is the Friends of St. Peter's. They're a brilliant bunch and you will see them when we're in normal life at various events. They're brilliant about coming along and helping out and, and helping people to mix and to socialize and introduce people and help people feel welcomed as well. And they're always very happy when people want to sometimes join the committee, sometimes just say, you know, be very happy to be a helper um, for any of those events as well. So please do give some consideration to that. You get a slightly weird thing at Peter's, which is that when your child's very young um, and you have that very much that school gate thing, where as a parent, you're there in the morning, you're there in the evening, and you spend a lot of time seeing the other parents and being around people. And then you sort of go through sort of what you might call in, in historical terms, you know, the, the dark ages before the Renaissance starts to kick in, which is where, you know, you, you perhaps feel slightly less engaged with your family and a little bit more distance from, from your child's life at school. As I say, there is this rather lovely thing when your child gets into 13 to 18, that actually you then get a bit more of that sort that school gate thing and you know last night again another brilliant example all the parents who were there really enjoying socializing with each other um, it is a very social school i have to say so in terms of, sort of dinners and events and and fun we, we do like to have a bit of fun um here at st peter's so so again just just see that as being part of your life as well the final remarks i want to make before uh, passing over to, to the video for you um is actually just to talk directly to, to the pupils uh, the ones who are going to be coming up and joining us um look forward to it uh, for those of you who are coming if to us from other schools, you form a very good number of new pupils joining into the school. And I always say to, to the pupils coming from, from the 8 to 13 section, you are in J5 now, you are not joining J6. You are joining third form at St Peter's at the senior school of the school, and you become one new year group in that very important part of the school as well. So you become this great new year group settling in, and we start to look forward to seeing how you're going to get involved. And when I say have confidence, part of the reason why I say that is, as you all know, we've been around for a heck of a long time. So coming up for 1,400 years. The motto of the school, as I'm sure you know, is over ancient ways. And when you join St. Peter's, you join a pathway of people who've traveled over those ancient ways for an extraordinarily long time. Only two other schools in the country can suggest that they've been doing it for longer than us. When you've been around for that long and you look at the school today in very, very strong shape, you know, very well regarded and doing, doing very well and so forth, there's a reason for that, and it's because the school has always kept on moving forwards. If the school hadn't changed and hadn't thought about where the future and what we need to be doing to prepare pupils for their futures, we wouldn't be in the shape that we are now. And it's that sort of depth of heritage that then gives all of us the confidence to be really forward thinking and to be looking ahead to the future, as well as, I would say, having a sense of pride of being part of something of such great heritage as well. One of my messages to the pupils, uh, and this is not going back quite to the qualifications piece, is that bring with you and try to develop when you're here three C's and an F. If all you walk out from from Peter's is three C's and an F, you will have done tremendously well. And uh, you've probably guessed by now, I'm not talking about exam goes. The three C's and F that I talk about are confidence, 
commitment, communication and flexibility. Keep those in your mind as you're thinking about starting into school at the beginning of the next term and as you go through. Come in with a sense of confidence. Think about the things that you know you enjoy and you know you do good at. Remind yourself that you have talents and you have things that you're great at and bring that sense of inner confidence with you as you come in. Commitment, it's a busy school, it's a fantastic school. Commit to it. The more you throw into your life here at Peters, the more you will get out of it but also the more you'll find that it will in, sort of encourage you to try new things and to develop yourself and move forward. So confidence and commitment, communication. Communication is really important. That could be everything from just going up to somebody on the first day and saying, hi, what do you do for your summer? You know, hi, my name's Jeremy, whatever it might be. That can be one form of communication. In the classroom, it can mean just chancing your arm, sticking your hand up and taking a go about something. It can mean communicating with your tutors, with your teachers, talking to them about any concerns which you might have or something which you've got coming up that you want to let them know about. Really, really importantly, communicate with your parents. Uh, I'm afraid there is something of the, the adolescent stereotype of uh, the, the, the grunting teenager. Um, and your parents do want to know how life is going for you and what you've been up to. So keep that sense of communication there as well. And flexibility. Flexibility is possibly one of the best skills that you can actually develop, one of the most important. That willingness to adapt and to change and to recognize that ahead of you, from the age of 13 to 18, they've got the most wonderful journey coming up for you, the most wonderful range of opportunities. And to really grab the chance of those, that sense of being willing to be flexible, willing to recognize that not everything will go your way all of the time. But if you have that sense of, you know, the, the wise bamboo bends with the wind type thing from time to time, you will find that life is easier and life is happier and more enjoyable. So get involved and have a tremendous amount of fun because that's really what it should be all about. Yes, I can talk to you about the structures and the tutoring and the reporting system and all the rest of it. But scaffolding is ugly and should be hidden inside buildings sometimes. Mainly come to Peter's, come in September, ready to really throw yourself into it and have a tremendous amount of time. Uh, I really hope you have a great morning this morning uh, and massively looking forward to seeing all of you uh, later on, obviously in September. And then for the Q&A, now then, this is where I, I have a team across the left who are out of shot, by the way, and they're now watching with bated breath to see whether I can remember how to do this. I can because I've spent about 15 million hours of my life on Zoom for the last, last year or so. Okay, hopefully, this is now going to go into a day in the life of St. Peter's. Um, so I'm going to play the video, put myself on mute, which is always a good plan, um, and then we'll look forward to seeing you in a little bit. But great to see you this morning. Here at St. Peter's, we have six day houses and four boarding. Right now, we're still outside one called School. As I'm the current head of house for Schoolhouse, I'm there to make sure that anyone new and in the younger years feels happy and included when they join. The house is where you meet every morning before chapel or assembly or tutor time. You come here to sign in and out with your house parents. As you move up through the years, you'll find that your house becomes closer and closer. Your year group forms stronger and the friendships will last forever. The school day normally starts between 8 and 8.20. After signing in with your house parent, you come into a room like this. This is our junior common room within school house. You can see behind me that there are cubby holes for people to put their belongings in, lockers that can be padlocked for any valuables, and enough desk space for everyone to be able to do homework. You can find that the common rooms can be quite busy at break time. This runs from 11 to 11.20. They also get quite busy during lunch as well, from 12.40 till two. The school day ends on Mondays and Fridays at 3.20 is when we have our last lesson. After this, pupils tend to go on to do activities such as sport until around half five. On Wednesdays and Saturdays, the school day ends at four. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the school day ends at four as well, but pupils have the option to do extra activities after. All of the common rooms come with a notice board in them, as you can see behind. This is where house parents tend to put on notices regarding house events, important information, or other things such as exam timetables. Being put into common rooms with your year group make it really easy to make friends. We know it can be nervous or daunting joining a new school, whether it's in third form or any other year. At St. Peter's, being part of a house is so much more than just having a place to go. We tend to have loads of house events, from cross country to sports day, to swimming, to hockey, to rugby, the list goes on. You find that the houses become very competitive with each other and that the spirit and morale in each house tends to be really high on the day. They make the events really enjoyable and we recommend that you just get stuck in with everything. This is the chapel. We have chapel three times a week and it's compulsory. 
I think that chapel is a great way to wake up in the morning. We sing two hymns and also pray. And there is also a theme to the chapel. We all have our assigned seating, which is in houses, unless you're in the choir, which is when you sit at the top. We also have special services for things like remembrance service and also for mass and also for the confirmation service. These are great ways for the whole school to come together as a moment to relax during the busy, busy week that we all have. Another great thing to get involved in is chapel reading. You can talk to the Rev when you first arrive and be added to his list of chapel readers and you will be assigned a date to read in chapel. This is our new Pascal building. It has modern foreign languages in and maths. There are 18 classrooms spread across the three floors. Behind me is the music school. This is where you have your private music lessons and also the music timetables. The Barbie shop and the barber shop also practice here. Music is a massive part of St Peter's life. A lot of people take up an instrument, but also are, are part of the ensembles. We have an orchestra, wind band, a choir, smaller choirs, a chamber choir, and many more. We have concerts all the way through the year, including the Easter, autumn, and also the summer concert, which is the biggest, where all the upper sixth can choose if they perform a solo or a group, and also the choir perform. There are also music tours that take place every two years. We've been to places like Barcelona and New York and Venice. Behind me is the drama department. This is where pupils come to rehearse for A-levels, GCSEs and also the school's productions. Some of the school's productions include Alice in Wonderland, Les Miserables and more recently Beauty and the Beast. Here is where you queue for lunch and it goes through here and you collect your food from here and go along and take a seat on one of these tables in the dining room. You will be assigned a slot to come for lunch. These will be based on year group. Sick form can go in first and if you have an extracurricular activity, you can also go in early. Then between the third, fourth and fifth form, lunch times are rotated. So you must keep an eye on the board to see when your lunch time is. There is lots of choice at lunch. There is always a different hot meal every day, a vegetarian option, a jacket potato or pasta, we have a sandwich bar and also a salad bar. At break, there is the opportunity to come into the dining room and buy a hot snack. This can be a bacon sandwich or a croissant, and you also get the opportunity to have a hot chocolate. It is a great way for all the houses to come together and sit in the dining room. The dining room is also used for house dinners, brunch, and for lunch and dinner for the boarders. Lunch is a great time to do other activities. People normally do four activities outside of their normal lessons. In lunch, there are great things to do like hockey practice, barbie or barber shop, choir, debating, all of these things you can take part in during a lunch time. This is the monkey cage where all the sports boards are. You come here to check where you are for your games options. It tends to get quite busy during the changeovers between lessons and also around lunch and break time. Every week, we finish lessons at lunchtime on a Wednesday and a Saturday. This gives us the opportunity to do games for a long time on Wednesday and Saturday. We can get involved with anything, rugby, cricket, hockey and netball. We play 15 different sports and over 200 teams. It does not matter how good you are at the sport, you can get involved. There are teams of every kind of level. We have a cricket pitch, many rugby pitches, a hockey astro and many netball courts, swimming pool and also a boathouse. Games is compulsory on a Wednesday and a Saturday, but optional every other day of the week. We play competitive matches, so we play against other schools, and this gives us a sense of purpose when we're training for our sports. We also have a lot of other friendly competition, like inter-house sports events, like sports day, and also house competitions with any sport you can think of. Being a part of a house event also makes you feel a great sense of pride for your house and wanting to do well. We also have a gym and a sports hall, which is used during games on a Wednesday and Saturday and can be used for bodycon and fitness and there are also sessions in the gym which are taken. This field can be used for the athletics track during the summer term and it's also used for rugby and football and sometimes even rounders. We have the hockey astro. This is used in the winter for the girls, in the spring for the boys and in the summer term it's used for tennis for girls and boys. The astro is also a great place to play some recreational tennis. In the evenings the borders can come down and during lunchtime and breaks the astro is sometimes open to play some tennis. Here is our swimming pool, which is used very often for people out of school and also for all ages from Clifton to Peters. Our new boathouse is almost twice the size of our old one. With its close location to the river being metres away, it makes it easier to get the boats in and out and off the water. The boathouse was completed in October of 2019. 
The school offers rowing as one of its sporting options to pupils. The sport is available to all five years of the school. As the current boat club captain, I'm happy to see that there is still a high number of people that choose rowing. Rowing is a sport where all year groups get along with each other. There's no divide between the upper end of the school and the lower end of the school. Unlike most sports, you can show up to rowing with no experience. With our high caliber of coaches, anyone is able to come down and have a go. Whether it's by yourself or with a crew of other people, the bonds you form within a crew further up the year groups get stronger. The new boathouse has really lifted the name of rowing within the school. We take part in many home events, which are easy to attend due to the location of the boathouse. We also travel up and down the country attending different events of different statuses. More recently, some of our senior crews have attended Henley Royal Regatta. The art department is based right next to the Hockey Astro. After school every day, there is the option to do art club. There is also many opportunities to get involved with the arts facilities we have at school. You must take art in third form and then you can decide to carry it on for GCSE or for pre-U in the sixth form. We have a drawing and painting studio, a printmaking facility, a dark room and a ceramic studio. We also have a gallery called the Whitestone Gallery, which all the work that you've done throughout your year can be exhibited. Here is the school shop. This is very popular during break time for a quick snack. It is also very useful if you're missing a piece of clothing, for instance a tie or some tights or a sports uniform. Welcome to our library. This is where our computers are located. This is where some sick form come if they have essays to do or coursework. We also have another desk up here, available to be used by people with laptops. You can request any books that you like. Mrs Wong, the librarian, can easily buy them and add them to the collection. Here are some of the desks available to the sick form that they can use during their sit out to work productively. We hope you've enjoyed your tour of St Peter's. And you're excited to join in September. We know it can be a nerve wracking experience joining a new school, but all we say is take every opportunity that St Peter's offers. We hope you get to experience everything that we have. Just get stuck in. We can't wait to meet you in September. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello again, everybody. I hope you've uh, hope had a, a good morning so far. Um, I have the remote control. I just have a quick look, see if I can pan this in a bit better. There we go. Um, it's all right. You should, you should see me trying to play on my son's Xbox. It's, it's pretty unimpressive, my, my button mashing skills. Right then. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to sort of start off the Q&A by just by going sort of round in the circle, as it were. I, I may, may attempt to use the remote control again, um, or it could be an absolute disaster. And just to introduce uh, who we have with us. So as I mentioned earlier on, we've got members of the student team, but we've also got a couple of our pupils uh, in the upper sixth as well. So we're going to start across on, on my left-hand side, uh, first of all, with Harrison. Uh, hello there, I'm, I'm Harrison. I've been at the school since um, nursery and I'm involved in quite a bit of the music and the drama and that's so essentially sort of the long and short of it. You say, you say the long and the short of it, do you want to <laughs> expand slightly on some, on some of the music that you're doing and thoughts for the future? Um, well, in this last week we just had the, uh, the, the cabaret show which uh, we've been organising over sort of the last term. Um, been involved in stuff like the, the barbershop and the choir. Um, the, the choir particularly is a, a very sort of inclusive part of the school. I think we have sort of over 100, um, seem to 170. Yeah, it's it's a, a huge thing and everyone gets involved with it. It's, it's really great for stuff like the community aspects of the school because you really get to interact with different year groups and, um, well, people who you wouldn't necessarily cross paths with. Uh, so. Lovely. And heading off to? Um, get to the Royal Academy of Music. To a very good. Tremendous. Thank you. And uh, across to Jenny, please. Um, hi, I'm Jenny. I've also been here since nursery, so I've been here for a long time. Um, I'm hopefully going to do medicine next year, which is very exciting. The school's been really good at supporting me through that journey. Okay, thank you very much. And moving around to Steve. Hello, I'm Steve William. I'm the director of the co-curricular programme, uh, which means I oversee um, and the various activities that take place, music, sport, drama, uh, and many, many other things besides. Uh, that um, and also uh, school trips, so educational visits and the process involved with those. Uh, I've been here quite a while since 2002. Uh, prior to taking this role a couple of years ago, I was uh, boarding house master in the manor for nine years. And prior to that day, house parent in Queens for six. So I've been here some time. Okay, thank you. 
And one thing I, I should have said is um, please do start typing in some questions into the into the chat function. Um, we've, so, we've got so three screens and over 100, 100 people. So we probably won't, won't see you if you're waving your hand. So, so if you wouldn't mind using the chat function, please, and you can either do it just privately, so directly in, or you can do it to, to everyone, entirely up to you. Um, and then we'll, so we'll field questions through there. That would be great. So I'll just move around to the next person on the screen, which would be, there we go, my big, big face, I'll move that out of the way. Right, so uh, over to Duncan, please. Hello, I'm Duncan Guinness, um, I'm the academic deputy, which means I have to look after the overseas teaching and learning in the school. Um, I'm also involved in the boarding as far as my, my wife, Dorothy, uh, runs one of the, uh, the two girls' boarding houses. Um, I teach uh, classics and art history, and um, I get involved in some string playing um, in the music department. And um, yeah, that's that's about me. I've been here since 2012. Okay, thank you. And Tracy. Hi, I'm Tracy Mounter. Um, this is my second year at school, probably only a year actually physically in school. Um, I am a pastoral deputy head, so I oversight all the day and boarding care for pupils. Um, I teach history and I coach netball and cross country. Okay. Lovely. And uh, obviously, I'm, I'm Joe Walker. Just a, just a little bit of background would be useful. Um, so I went to, to boarding school from the age of eight to 18. Uh, for the very practical reason, my father's in the army, we're shifting around a lot. Um, and then after my degree, I trained in teaching and variously been um, head of department in, in a couple of different schools, a housemaster, um, head of theory of knowledge in the IB programme for one particular school, and then deputy head and then headmaster of the sixth form at Berkhamstead in Hertfordshire before seven years being headmaster of King's School Rochester down in Kent and uh, just come towards the end of my, my third year um, up here, uh, half of which has been, been uh, perhaps slightly different than I anticipated when I first moved out. So thoroughly looking forward to hopefully next academic year, marking the, the start of the return back to normality. So uh, very much sort of uh, over to you. We, we've got a couple of topics, which is sort of, you know, the sort of perennial ones which come up. Um, and so, so we can we can certainly work through on that one. And we've got a, a question about about catering, um, and asking about uh, whether these whether the standard food said it's declined post COVID and where catering's going. So I wonder, Steve, over to you. Yeah, I, I have some uh, in the fourth form, and there's no doubt catering was a challenge in in, in the first, in the sort of September October period as a result of having to build two dining rooms uh, and also the various restrictions that the catering department themselves to work under in terms of the preparation of food. Uh, now we've been back in the main dining hall um, uh, and all students have been in there since the fifth and the other sixth have gone on to study leave. Uh, that's certainly made life a lot better. And uh, uh, I go by him rather than by what, my own experience. I eat in there every day, but what he tells me is uh, uh, the food uh, it is, has been excellent in, in the last half term, given that we're now able to produce it in that one place uh, with a much greater variety of options possible uh, because of the uh, uh, no longer have those difficulties in transport, so um, uh, you know we you know we've got good ambitions on on that side, and we also uh, had a new uh, head chef uh, join us quite recently as well, which has meant that the menus have, have sort of changed and evolved uh, uh, to match the pupils. Um, it's probably better to ask the pupils rather than me uh, uh, directly, however, because they have an important experience of it, so I'll, so I'll let them talk freely about it. Um, I think a really important thing is that we have loads of councils in school, so we have a food council particularly for this, where pupils from all age groups, like third form to upper sick, can come and give their opinions. So you can actually give feedback on the food that's then, which is run by Mr. Williams here, and then that is fed back to the kitchen staff, and then like that can show improvements. So certain dishes can be taken off the menu and certain dishes can be added on. So our views are heard and that's really important. I, I think one of the really good things is uh, I, I, I have a few allergies and what's really helpful about that is uh, that the, the kitchen staff, after um, quite a short amount of time, they, they know exactly who they need to sort of deal with for that. And I, I mean, you, you really don't have to ask as soon as they see you, they get straight on it and they're, they're so helpful and they've been brilliant over sort of all the 15 years I've been here. Thank you. Right. So we've got a question which is about um, about the form structure and uh, and houses. I think I'll sort of pass to Duncan and to Tracy. This is to, to explain. So for people who may not sort of understand the context behind this, um, in the in the eight to thirteen section of the school, they have a house system. They have a, a tutor system. They it's called mentoring, and they also have a form system as well. So so it's really just to explain how how that, that operates. Yeah, so um, in third form year nine, um, what we call forms is really just the classes in which the pupils will do um, their core subjects. So 
just a third form, uh, they would be in the same group for the sciences, for English, for history, for geography, and so forth. Um, so that's what we mean when we talk about the forms, and, and everyone, every people will be allocated to a form, and they'll go around as that group for nearly all their subjects. Now, the subjects it doesn't apply to uh, mathematics, where they are, are in, in separate sets so that they can be working at the right level, um, and it doesn't apply uh, to modern languages because for modern languages, um, there's a choice of modern languages, so not everyone is doing exactly the same, the same set. So when we talk about forms, it's just that just in the year nine they move around. In terms of the houses, these are the houses you've been, you've been allocated to, and that, that's the sort of the central part of the unit which you stay in all the way through. Um, so I hope that, that explains the distinction. Tracy? Uh, and just to add that then obviously there would tutor time on a Tuesday and Thursday morning where you would meet in your house tutor group. Uh, which John was referring to, that you would stay through right through your time at St Peter's, and that's when you would meet with your tutor from the house um, structure. Okay, thank you. So we've got a, a question on uh, co-curricular, the extracurricular. Um, so obviously Jenny and, and Harris, as we have heard, are very, very busy. I mean, in fact, so one of the things that um, Steve Quilliam has done since he's taken over the co-curricular, he's got this fantastic sort of data management system called SOX, which, which helps us enormously because it's such an enormous range of different activities that take place. And so that's the way in which we organise it. It's also a way we can use it as a pastoral tool as well, because one of the, you know, the biggest concern we have here is not uh, are the children busy enough, but actually if they are very, very actively involved in loads of different things, how we can actually sort of see the whole picture of the, their lives as it were, and keep that balanced. So, so co curriculum is a good, good sort of area to start, to start with. I think I'll go across to Jenny first and then to Harrison. So the specific question is uh, what extracurricular events would the sixth formers recommend? Uh, do they always cut into to lunchtime? Uh, it was a question as well. So start with Jenny and then move to Harrison, and then perhaps back to Steve. Um, well, there's so many extracurriculars, like ranging from music, drama, sporting, and, and debating, which I've got involved in, lots of them. So there's, I don't know how many extracurriculars do you have to Well, in, in, in normal circumstances, um, um, which is now some time ago, I, I, I have to go back and check exactly how many we got to, but because we were doing it in bubbles this year, uh, we got to 167 each week. And that did not include ad hoc lunchtime practices on, 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 on a sort of informal basis. We had 167 formal foot drilling uh, every single week. So it was a pretty big program. <laughs> We've better almost come to the end on that. Um, and I think all of the extracurriculars have really helped my self confidence. So from like going up through my time at Peters, but particularly joining in the third form, has been like vital in order to meet the older years as well. So by doing debating and joining drama clubs and getting involved in all the sport here, you get to meet the older years as well. As well in your house, you obviously meet people there, but that's a really important thing. I wouldn't worry about it cutting into lunchtime because like you'll be hopefully with your friends and it's, um, you can do it at the end of this, it depends, so you'd like, some will be at the end of the day and some are in lunch time, but you'd still have time for lunch if that makes sense, so we'd like, they always cater for you to be able to have lunch in between then. It's one of the, the benefits, I think I might mentioned earlier, of having an hour and 20 minutes for lunch. Um, many schools just sort of squeeze, it, squeeze an hour and the hour and 20 sort of gives a bit of flexibility. So Harrison? Yes, well I think it, it, it's very much you can do as much as you want to do. I think there is a there is a trend to sort of fill up as much time uh, as you can, especially as you get sort of later on in school, because they're just all really enjoyable. And as far as sort of missing missing lunch and missing maybe some social time, um, most of the co-curricular activities do end up sort of um, becoming sort of functionally a bit of social time. I mean, stuff like uh, boys barbershop and choir. There's uh, you, you're, you're working quite hard on them, but it's always um, a very fun and it's, it's very social. Um, and I think that's sort of a testament to how the teachers make all these activities incredibly interesting. Can we, can we ask about balance in terms of the, the, the week and how that the, the sort of very full sort of Monday through to Saturday afternoon and then Sundays? And I mean, your experience may be a little untypical because of quite how many things you've been doing, but in, in general terms, your, your sense of how does Sundays fit in and how do half terms and holidays fit in? Um, well, I think when, when you're doing this, obviously we have Saturday school, which isn't sort of quite uh, the norm, but really it doesn't 
doesn't affect the whole experience that much because we, we do get you know, slightly longer holidays. And I think generally throughout the school, there's a sense that there is this balance of how much time we get at home and how much time we get at school. I think the, the thing that helps that probably most is the fact that we do so much, uh, so much sport and so much e extracurricular stuff. So you're not always uh, the entire week sitting at a desk doing stuff. You're moving around, you're staying interested and you're um, doing a variety of things. It, it doesn't become stagnant and it doesn't become sort of stale because you're, you're, you're always moving. And um, yeah, that's really true. And also I think from my personal experience doing all the, not all, but like a lot of the extracurriculars that St. Peter's offer, sometimes it might feel a bit overwhelming particularly when you're in third form and you're new and it's all just a bit stressful. But like the really important thing to remember is that like everyone's here for you so you can easily speak to your tutor or your housemaster and they can get in contact with your um, teachers and just kind of relieve the pressure. So a personal example is when I was in those six, it was really a really busy time because we were doing the school production and I had lots of things on by doing like four A levels at that point. Um, but I spoke to my housemaster, Mr. Hall, um, and he was just really helpful and like talked to my teachers and that was really helpful in like relieving the pressure off me. So don't feel like you can't do extracurriculars and your schoolwork because it merges together really nicely. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the patterns you, you should notice is that they, they shouldn't need to do any work at all on Sundays. Um, you know, if, if they are, then there's perhaps a slight sort of lack of organisation gone, but, but for the, the overwhelming majority of pupils, um, Sunday should be a day where no school work is needed at all. And you'll also find that Mr Gillies will sort of send emails home quite frequently around some half terms and things act actively saying, um, you will notice that your child's teachers have not set any prep. Uh, this is deliberate, you know, they, they need the rest and they need the break. So this is one of, one of the, the approach to the school, which we also think is quite a good one to, for life as well. Have a really busy life and as, as Harrison was saying, have a very varied life, you know, try not to get stuck behind a day. You know, get out and get, get doing things during the course of your life as well. But then also know when you need to take a break in terms of sustainability and balance and rest. And so, so we, we are, in, to a certain extent, a bit of a tap on, tap off school. Um, you know, very, very full on when we're here during term time. Shouldn't have to do anything on Sundays. And the holidays should bring the, the, the opportunity for a, a proper rest as well. Okay, so, oh, sorry, I, enough, I, I just thought it'd be useful to add to, with, back to sort of the house system. Um, your, your, the mentor, so the person who's specific to your, your child's year within your house, really sort of looks after you and really makes sure that you're not being overworked or like if you, they'll be informed if you've missed a prep and they'll go, okay, how can, how can we help this? Do you have too much? Do you have to move something around? It's just, it's been very helpful for me over the, over the five years I've been here. Thank you. And, and again, going back to some of my points earlier on about the importance of parental communication and contact as well, because you, of course, will see a picture outside of school that we, we won't see. Um, and so keeping in contact there. So, so a question, it's a suggestion, I suppose, as much as anything else, it's about would it, would it be possible to see a video of the house the child has joined so you can see where they'll physically be from September. Um, if, we, if we can't get around doing that, we can certainly look into on the Saturday we we're talking about, so I'm looking at Sarah Opie's who's slightly out of shot at the moment. Um, when, when we're inviting parents in on the, the first Saturday of term to come and have a look at them then as well. That's good. I just want a thumbs up. Um, there's a, a question about uh, new entrants in the fourth form setting. And of course, uh, we, we do have some, some families here with us today whose child is joining at the start of the fourth form. Uh, forgive me, I should have said earlier on that on that first day back, it's the, it's the, new, it's the, it's the third form new and fourth form who are new and lower sixth. So that's one of the ways in which we help the new fourth form to settle in as they start as well. And just, just to add, I remember in last September, a cluster of girls or um, boys standing outside the, uh, in the horseshoe here waiting because they'd been buddied up with somebody to meet them on arrival at the school and then take them into their common rooms. So there is a buddying up system that will take place on that first day as well. Lovely, thank you. Um, I've got a question about flexi-boarding. Is flexi-boarding an option? So the, the way boarding operates at Peters is that we have, we have full boarding. Um, we don't differentiate between weekly boarding and full boarding because with everybody being here until Saturday afternoon, it, it wouldn't really make much sense to differentiate between the two. And then we have what we call part-time boardings. Now, now flexi-boarding often in, in our sector refers to the occasional night. It might be one night a term. It might be one night every two to three weeks type thing. Um, and we don't do that because we find that it gives a much better sense of continuity for the houses. Um, the, the boarding system is very strong at the school and in terms of sort of numbers of pupils and so forth. And I think that if we went down sort of a total flexi approach, it would really start to sort of change that dynamic as well. So, so part-time boarding, which is a, a very sort of popular option for, for some families, especially sometimes as the child gets a bit older, 
or when they're getting very busy um, as well. And that is where you are a boarder for three nights of the week. And you sort of st state in advance of each term which three nights they're going to be. And that gives the, the child the continuity. And it means that they are fully a member of the boarding house because there's that sense of continuity um, as it goes through for them. And then uh, going through into the sixth form, um, we do full boarding in, only in the sixth form. Uh, and again, we, we have a very large number of pupils who either transfer from day to boarding um, or part time to full boarding or new pupils to the school who come to the school because of wanting to have, well, first of all, Peter's for, for, for their sixth form. But secondly, that boarding experience is a preparation for moving on from school as well. So a question for Mr. Gillies. I think that's the next couple of questions, Mr. Gillies. So the first one here is, uh, it was mentioned in the house talk that third years were to do two languages. Uh, for people from outside Peters, when do they make that choice and how? Right, um, there should have been, but I'll, I'll need to check, a form going home with the, the various joining instructions, which is, which invites you to make that choice. Um, I'll check with that it's gone to everyone. If you haven't got that form, could you please uh, let, let us know and we'll follow up on that. In terms of how to make that choice, um, when pupils have been already studying uh, French or German or Spanish, that would be the natural choice, the, the ones you've already been studying. If you, um, uh, there's an alternative to starting Spanish as a beginner. So that's Spanish is the only one you start as a beginner. So it's effectively continuing your study of French or German or Spanish or starting absolutely afresh with Spanish. So they're, they're the options there. Um, so uh, if you haven't got that form, uh, we'll check that they've gone out um, and, and that's there. If you want to discuss how, how much you've done on different languages, whether you should do the beginning Spanish or continue on, um, again, uh, it, it just contact us and, and I can have a conversation with you about that to, to give you a sense of which is the best way to go. Okay, thank you. And there's a, a question about tech as well, about can pupils use their own laptop in class? If, if we can perhaps sort of start with the specific question of can they use their own laptop in class and then perhaps broaden out to how we use tech in teaching and learning. Yeah, I think that you may use, use it if, if that works for you. Um, however, uh, we, the reality of the world still is that exams are done by hand. Um, so uh, we, we would expect people to, to handwrite things. Now there are some people uh, for whom um, typing is uh, the way that they should operate in all certain situations. So if you're in that category, then yes, bring your laptop, you use it all the time. Um, if you're going to be a handwriting, a mixture is absolutely fine. There isn't a requirement to it. In terms of the, the wider things around tech, um, we've, we've spent a lot of time and, and, and money sort of ca catching up to be, to be, to be fair, we, we were sort of uh, a little bit behind on those things. So we've got um, uh, an ever improving Wi-Fi system so uh, pupils can log on with their own machine um, anywhere around the school with their own, with their own, um, with, uh, their own phone or a laptop or whatever device. Um, and the, you know, the, the capacity um, is getting very close to being everyone should, should, should Everyone, every um, person in the school should be able to have two, two devices on at the same time and there's still capacity. So that's like where, we're, where we're getting to. We're developing how exactly we're going to move forward with, with teaching and pupils. That's, that's something which will, will be sort of news and, and, and ideas developed over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, but uh, very much encouraged, you know, we, we want people to use technology as part of it part of life, we, we think you know, phones are good, um, phones can be bad as well, so, so there's, there's a set of, sort of rules around what is acceptable use of phones and so forth, um, but uh, I might just hand over to Tracy about phones because that's sort of part of the technology thing as well. Isn't it? Um, just to clarify, um, obviously pupils are welcome to use their phones around the school site. There are a couple of um, rules that we you know, try to keep in place in terms of making sure that they are having face-to-face -face interaction with their fellow pupils and obviously teachers. So the dining room, for example, um, I'm looking at both Jenny and Harrison because they'll know that in the dining room that um, we encourage pupils to have obviously face-to-face -face conversations rather than to be looking down at a screen. And similarly, just walking around the school site, we don't want pupils looking down at their screens. We prefer them to be interacting with the world around them. That being said, they are free to use them at break times and lunch times. Um, so they are allowed you know, to uh, check things in, in that time in their free time. But in terms of moving around the site, we would, we would like them to keep. And in lessons, um, you know, it, and sometimes the teacher may well ask if they want to search something up. But actually, in lessons, usually their mobile phones are kept either in their lockers or on their, in their blazer pockets. 
Okay, um, so it's a question about clarifying starting and finishing time. So uh, this is a this is a tricky question to answer. So I'm going to pass over to Jay and Harrison because on the stated timetable, the, the end of the last lesson each day does change from one day to the next. Um, but then, it's sort of, then we can move into how the co-curricular patterns through. So good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to think because obviously it's changed. It's been a while since you actually yeah. tried <laughs> um, So we, on, we have days which we have sport on. So they would often finish at four o'clock. So that would be Wednesdays um, and Saturdays. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but also, like the Monday, it would be at 3.20. Um, you get into the swing of this, it sounds really complicated, but by the time, like in the next two weeks, once you're there, it, it makes sense. Um, and then that gives you room to also add on an extracurricular. So on most days you can add on extracurriculars to, and then that would mean that you'd finish a bit later, but not significantly so. Okay. So in, in, in third form, the, the expectation is that the pupils do a minimum of four co-curricular activities a week. So what we're actually able to do is to start giving them a bit of independence of choice and thought. So you will find that some people sign up for a lot more than four and therefore the ending of their day or how, they, how their work week might look will be different from one person to another. And it's uh, from our point of view, it's the, having the common pattern, so obviously the timetable is the same common pattern. Wednesday and Saturdays for, for games and sporting activities is a common pattern and four co-curricular activities is a common pattern but whether where the four fits in can vary. Um, on the plus side, going back to Harrison's point I think, um, about the sense of pace and variety and also space that it brings into the week as well. Um, just yeah, start time. So just with the start time, just mm -hmm. to um, clarify that um, all the day houses are staffed for about 7.30 in the morning so if pupils arrive early then they're welcome to go to their common room spaces and uh, just you know there'll be quite a few pupils with on-site staff on site from that time but actually officially the school day starts at 8.20 where they will register in houses um, and then obviously lessons start at nine o'clock. Okay thank you we've got some uh, co-curricular ones I think Steve could be uh, useful here so it's a question about um, any all-year school trips um, obviously we've missed these uh, over the last six months so I know Steve's been doing a lot of work and sort of forward thinking about some of the, the major trips and things so over to you. Yeah we've just started um, uh, to, to look at school trips for the next uh, academic year uh, you may have received recently uh, an invite in relation to the ski trip uh, which became oversubscribed in 36 hours uh, clearly pointing out there's, there's quite a lot of demand for uh, school trips um, we're obviously having to proceed pretty cautiously uh, at the minute because uh, obviously there are all sorts of implications that, that might go with uh, quarantines or tests and various other things so we are being very very careful and pretty sure of our own position before we roll things out but the intention is as soon as we are able to to, to recommence our, our usual program of, <coughs> me, of uh, school trips as soon as we are able to uh, and once we're satisfied with, with, with the terms and conditions for those and therefore in relation to that question the answer is yes there are some trips that cover uh, all school years there are some trips which are aimed more at specific year groups for example if it's an overseas sports tour it will be for sixth form pupils um, some trips actually aim just at younger people so so there are a combination of all year and just year specific uh, trips and the, the, the choir tours in New York, for example, is going to be all, all the year groups who are in the, in, the school, in the school choir. So you do get a, quite a nice blend. Um, back to Steve again, for, can pupils do both Duke of Edinburgh and CCF? Uh, the answer is yes, when those become available. Um, uh, Duke of Edinburgh, um, obviously the programme's got behind a little bit uh, for our current pupils, having to work out the balance between catch-up and just sort of, uh, sort of writing certain things off and moving forwards. So it is possible, for example, for pupils who haven't been able to do bronze to get straight onto silver, which is what we're looking at uh, there. And then the intention with the third form, uh, in other words, your sons and daughters joining us, is around about October to provide further information about Duke of Edinburgh uh, on this. What we found in the past is parents have been very, very keen to sign their sons and daughters up to Duke of Edinburgh, thinking it's a wonderful thing for them to do, which of course it is. Um, but the pupils themselves, once they've experienced it, have been a little bit less keen on some aspects of it. Uh, in particular, they, they enjoy the expeditions of going out, but obviously there's volunteering elements, there's other administrative elements as well, which has been quite hard. So we want to sort of get a, a better understanding of what Duke of Edinburgh is, so that everybody, people and parents, knows what it involves. CCF tends to start in the fourth form uh, anyway, so there won't be a clash between those 
uh, for, for pupils joining us next year. So that's not an issue. The only uh, combination that doesn't work is wanting to do CCF, D of E, and be involved in various orchestras uh, because we can only fit all the three of those into two afternoons. So it's any two of those three are possible, but not all three. You're probably understanding why we have a whole role, which is director of the co-curricular program. Um, <laughs> and what one hat and you need to give it a good firm on it. Okay, um, I've got a question for, for Mr. Gillies, which is um, how many subjects do they choose for? So I guess it's two questions. One is how many subjects do, do they choose for GCSEs and how many do they do, they do in total? Yeah, so um, the, the total number of GCSEs they end up with is, is 10 GCSEs. Um, where the choice comes in uh, is you get to choose uh, uh, at least one body language and then uh, three other options um, which may include a second body language. So there are four things which are your own choice if you like uh, and the rest are part of the core. Uh, that, that, that final choice happens in, in uh, February after half term but before that there would be normally be a parents, parents meeting um, in, in uh, early February before the half term and uh, we have a presentation in um, in November or December to, to introduce it to, to the ideas there. I think there was another sort of related question which was just about classics and, and Latin there. Um, most people who haven't done um, Latin um, already will, will do classics. Uh, if you really want to do Latin then, then we will find a way for that to happen as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and there's a question, it's a, I think the broad, broad sense of the question is to do with encouraging pupils to try new things. So the sense of, um, they sort of parents say that they're really trying to encourage the, the boys to try something new outside the comfort zone, but sort of find that they're drawn to doing the winner, whatever their friends are doing. So I suppose it's a, a pastoral question as much as anything else as, as a co-curricular question. So Tracy, about sort of encouraging pupils to, to get out of their comfort zone and do different things. Uh, yeah, I think tu the tutors will play a pivotal role within that, and in particularly in the first few sessions and the first few weeks of the term, and particularly as we move from obviously um, year group base back to our normal um, program of co-curricular, um, where they'll be asked to sign up um, for the co-curricular program, and through that the tutors will be able to talk to them about the different options that are available. And obviously within the house system, I think that's one of the beauties of the house system is that you get to speak to all the pupils who are doing the different activities and got experience of the different activities. And particularly in September, we'll be mixing the, the tutor groups, the fourth and fifth year groups will be mixed within the house system. So we'll get that mentoring between the year groups to say, how have you found rowing? And then they can say, oh, well, it's been a big commitment, but I've got huge enjoyment out of it, it's given me discipline, etc." cetera. Um, so we think definitely they're within the house system, talking to the other pupils definitely has a huge benefit. But I, I, I mean, I'd ask, how do you think about it? Because you've, you've obviously done new things, haven't you, since you've joined? Yeah, I think that's really true. Like, you don't know what Rome's going to be like or debating, <clears throat> but like talking to the older year groups, which is really helpful because of the house system that you're placed in, is a really good point to start because then you can go up to them and like just kind of ask their opinion on it. And um, also talking to your tutor or talking to the sports staff who's running that or the person who's running the extracurricular can also be really helpful to kind of get a sense of what the activity is. And it links into there's another question here, which is um, who's the main contact for parents of the school, the housemaster, mistress, um, or the or the tutor? So Harrison, do you want to take that one and Jane, and then perhaps come back to Trent? Um, yeah, sure. Well, I think um, uh, for me, um, my my parents have had uh, sort of quite a lot of contact with my uh, both my housemaster and the children's uh, tutor. It sort of depends on um, what what their questions are. I think in a in a broader sense, the housemaster. Um, is sort of contact with, contacted when matters like what subjects they're choosing, whether they want to maybe switch an A-level or a GCSE if something isn't quite working out to them, whereas the, um, the tutor uh, may be more sort of personal matters um, if they're struggling with an aspect of school and they need someone to talk to, I think the tutor, because you do have a, you end up having a very close relationship with your tutor and um, they very much become sort of your uh, more personal relationship with the school as a whole. Thank you. Jenny? Um, yeah, I would say that my parents are in contact with both Mr. Bowden, who's my tutor, and Mr. Hall, who's my housemaster. Um, I think, like Harrison said, the house system in Peters is just vital. I think that's what makes Peters amazing, is the house system that you're placed into. Um, for me, moving through the school, it's been really helpful, particularly to meet new people as well coming in. I think that's really helpful that you're placed into a like, support system from the very start. So my tutor's been 
really helpful. I've stayed with him for three years now. So often you keep the same tutor, which I think help, helps with the continuity and then really making sure that they get to know you and know your like house, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I would just I'd echo, I, I, if you're in doubt, contact both, but I would always go with the housemaster or mistress first because they will liaise closely and work very closely with the tutor. So if in doubt, I'd contact the housemaster or mistress first as your first point of contact. But if you uh, know the name, you've got these letters to choose, then I would write to both. And the, the, the structure is a, is a fairly sort of clear sort of pyramid type shape and so in the sense that there's sort of a, a, a lower level concern or question or matter to be dealt with that may well be dealt with by the tutor whereas the house master mistress might then take on take on something that's a bit more complex than that and then after that then it, sort of, it would rise up to so that happened to be on the co-curricular go back to what i said earlier on we basically do three things here we do we do the academic we do the pastoral we do the co-curricular so so then sort of rise up to whichever one of you know director of co-curricular academic deputy um, or, or pastoral deputy would be the next next stage, and then after that, you also um, you have a senior deputy head. So that's uh, Morris Walters, who's coming to join us in September from Shrewsbury School. Um, and then after that, of course, there's there's little old me as well. So so what what I, what I tend to find is that, from terms of my perspective, things tend to would so be trying to get them dealt with at the right level, where you can get onto them quickly. So dealing with things early and fast is always much better. Um, if they do sometimes get complicated, it's absolutely fine. They will naturally find their sort of their right way through the system as well. And one of the things that I quite enjoy about the school is that, from my point of view, sometimes I do sort of, you know, I, I see what my colleagues are doing. They will come and discuss things with me. They'll ask for my opinion or my advice, which is always tremendously frustrating because we do that. Um, but, they, but they, you know, we will often discuss things <coughs> in a more sort of collective manner. So you may not actually hear directly from me on certain things, but actually I would have been involved. And one of the lovely things about Peter's is that from time to time, I get to feel like I'm a, I'm a sort of a, a big house master again, which is a, something that I massively enjoyed earlier on in my career. So that I also get a chance to sort of find out how things are going for people. That's why I happen to know, you know, what, this, what the pupils have plans for, where they're going off to do different things. Um, and it's one of the great things about school is, our ability to, to know what's going on. The, the internal flow of communication is just absolutely fantastic in terms of knowing, knowing what people are up to and the good stuff as well. So, you know, this morning, for example, at quarter past eight, I was on YouTube watching a couple of our pupils doing their time qualifiers down at Henley. So, you know, and I wander around, I see sports, I see concerts and things. So it is, it's actually a reasonably large school, but actually when you start to break it down into these component parts, it's a, it's a pretty easy place in terms of flowing things around. Right, so from, from that to prep, uh, so I'm going to pass to, to, to Duncan for this one. How much prep time-wise uh, should they be getting each week in the third form? Okay, it's, it's about an hour and a half each evening. Um, that, that will vary, it shouldn't get, we shouldn't get any more than that. Uh, there is a, there's a prep timetable, so that it doesn't get, um, you know, you don't suddenly have lots and lots of one night and none on the other. So the prep timetable says that on these nights you might get these subjects, um, so about an hour and a half um, uh, uh, each evening would be the norm. Okay. Uh, one I think is probably for Steve, uh, if, we, if the son's not sure whether they want to do rugby, um, should they buy the kit before school begins? Uh, there's a couple of important things in there really. One is uh, nobody has to do the rugby, so, so uh, if that's not the, the right option for your son, then that's absolutely fine. The actual rugby shirt, uh, as it's sometimes referred to, which is now a reversible shirt, it's two sides, you don't need to have two, now you only need one. That is used for other things as well. So that piece of kit is really useful because if you're doing hockey in the hockey season or you're doing other outside um, uh, team sports, then, then you would get good use out of that uh, in other contexts. So that itself is quite useful. And of course, uh, I don't know if somebody, if, if, you know, if he's got football boots and things like that, and just wants to try and be out in the first couple of terms, that, that, that will be fine. So, so uh, I'd always say you know, the shirt, yes, but everything else, I wouldn't worry about too much you know, until that decision is made. Yeah, there's a question about um, will we get a welcome back explaining any requirements for the personal computer? Um, there's no, it's going back to Duncan's answer, there's no, there's no requirement for a personal computer. So, so in terms of what sort of operating systems it's running and so forth. So, so the, the approach that we're taking as a school is that any, any technology which they need to be using at school, now whether that might be doing CAD and CAM for design technology, um, oh. That sounds like a fire alarm being on. This is not deliberate, by the way, because actually I have to say the questions are great. It's not like sort of looked at some tricky questions or quick pull the plug. Um, this is really embarrassing. I'm, I'm afraid what, what, we're, going, we're going to have to be good people, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. I, I'm going to sort of turn us on mute over here and put our video off. Um, I hope we'll be back very shortly. Uh, I, I presume it's a drill. Anyway, my apologies. Hope to see you very soon.
Well, hello again. <laughs> it, was, it was actually a, a false alarm. Um, to, so, so, anyway, it was a good question to be asked about. Uh, how, how do you deal with sort of fire and security in the school? Um, very slickly, it would seem. So I don't know how to do it. A complete so got, got the whole school outside onto the playing fields, um, do the drills, get the air, the registers taken. And they've got these wonderful colleagues called the FAs, the facilities assistants. Um, and they're the ones who come through and just sort of sort everything out and check things through. So, so Miss Mount has now taken off her red, her red sort of bib, sort of, you know, buildings incident control and such thing, uh, as is Mr. Gillies, and is back in the room. Lovely. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, it's a, uh, an unexpected little cameo. Um, right. So the a question I was actually going to sort of think across to Sarah actually in a moment. We we're just talking about this thing about the requirements for a personal computer. And I was just explaining that the approach we've taken is that whatever tech they need for specific things, and I, was, I think I gave the example of CAD and CAM in design technology, um, the older they get, there's a fantastic software for, um, for music composition called Sebadius. Um, there's a wonderful stuff called Autograph for mathematics and things that we, we make sure that it's there in school for the pupils. What that means is that they then have the flexibility to, to have their own tech um, and to use it in, in any way they, they would like to. Um, and as Duncan was saying, we've got, we've got the, uh, the network now is set up so that you can have at least two devices for everybody on site at any one time and the Wi-Fi is still going to be absolutely fine. But Sarah, I, I, I know you were sitting slightly out of shot, but just uh, any questions about the welcome pack and things and, and how that works in terms of providing information? Yes, we are just working on a welcome pack um, which will go out towards the end of the summer um, and that will be specific to whether you're a new starter in the school or whether you're joining us from J5 um, and it will have everything about that start into the school. So um, we're still working on that. It will be another few weeks before you get it, but you'll get that before you join us um, and we'll make sure that it's got as, as much information as you need and also all those useful contact details if you have got any questions to follow up. Okay, right then. <laughs> Lots of people saying sorry they got to leave for, for various sports things as well. So right, okay. So just just sort of going going back up. I think it's just two or three more questions. Um, there's a question about communication. Uh, one of the house mistresses mentioned the intern reports whereby people might have a C where a C means concern. Uh, parents won't necessarily know about that unless there are a number of Cs. So just to, just it's, I think it's a Duncan question, but it also might be a Tracy question as well in terms of how we sort of look at those things and what we share with home and what what we sort of do at school. Yeah, the, the internal reports, um, it is just a, an efficient way for us to have a quick ask of the whole staff, um, uh, how is everyone going? So we do that every, basically every three weeks, right in the middle of each, each, each half term. Um, and the threshold for, for concern is, is you know, deliberately very low. So if one person, one teacher has seen that there's, there's something that doesn't, didn't look quite right, or was a bit late or something, or a bit disorganised, they'll, 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 they'll mention that. But what we're trying to do is see there's a pattern which is, which is something um, which is more concerning. So um, these, these are all discussed by the staff. So we just take a view on, okay, is this just uh, a little, uh, little blip which every team danger has, you know, every term ups and downs, that's absolutely fine. Um, so uh, it's only when, when we start to see a pattern that we say, actually, let's talk to you before the next formal set of reports. Um, in terms of uh, the other question, we'll just connect with that was uh, about uh, parents being informed of, of merits. Um, I think most of the, uh, or possibly all the houses, um, do uh, let the parents know um, when a merit has been uh, received by the people. Okay, thank you. And the question about can they do computer science GCC? Uh, yes, they can. Um, and so, so we, we, we brought computer science in as a discrete subject from, uh, well, from, from next term, uh, put it into the option blocks, and it was the fifth most, most popular of the optional subjects, so, uh, which we always kind of predicted would be something of the case. Um, and so for your, your children, they'll be coming through uh, with a much better computer science of program in third form and then obviously pathways going forward to GCSE and to A-levels apart from that. Um, just another strand really on a lot of work we've been doing around tech, both in terms of the kids and the network, but also how we incorporate into teaching and learning. Uh, sorry to throw out the cliche on this one, but you know, good old COVID has been a catalyst for many things um, in terms of how we use tech for communication internally, externally, flow of work, work being set, work being submitted electronically, being marked on a, you know, on a on an iPad or a tablet screen and return and all those sorts of things, much, much thicker. I'll, I'll take that opportunity just to digress slightly onto the topic of parents' evenings. 
Um, I imagine that uh, many of you, and perhaps all of you, will have experienced parents' evenings online and using video technology and so forth. Um, it's a really interesting area for us. It's, it's gone down very, very well indeed. Um, parents have sort of fed back, they found it sort of easy to use, um, dead simple, it's got fl the flexibility. You don't have to get home, have a cup of tea, drive into school and so forth. Um, you can do it from your desk at work or whatever it might be. So, so it seems to be, have worked really well for us. The, the, the concerns that have been expressed about it are so also fairly obvious ones. And that's to do with the human factor of just actually physically sort of being around in this inside the school, actually being with with people face to face as being slightly different. Um, some parents have said, you know, that although it's a, it does turn into a Darwinian struggle, you know, you've got the classic, there's there's the alleged timetable for your parents' evening meetings and there's what actually happens. Um, but that actually that sort of gives you a chance to socialise with parents. It gives us as school staff a chance to, to find out what's going on at home and uh, progressions and so forth. So, so it's, um, there are downsides to going online, but overall, I think it's fair to say that uh, it's been welcomed as being as being very very efficient and very very good use of time likewise i mean sessions such as this it would be lovely to have you all together but there are other information sessions that we do on the way through so for example about choosing gcse's or choosing a levels and we may find that some of those sorts of things we might put on uh, in this sort of format as well and obviously for overseas families uh, this is this is a, obviously actually a very good way of doing things um, I can second guess the answer, I'm going to pass it to Duncan. Uh, a possibility of business studies becoming a GCSE option at Peters. Uh, business studies and, and economics are available, obviously, um, at A level, but, uh, but not currently GCSE. Yeah, I think it's, uh, we, we look at all these things regularly, um, that's what we uh, computer science. Um, the current feeling is that, that um, business and economics work best at A level um, because of the, the uh, sort of world awareness one needs to, to to draw into that, um, and they're two very successful and very popular subjects at that point. So there are no plans at the moment, but we do, you know, we do review these things um, as as we see courses coming out. And one of the reasons that you know computing so is selling now, apart from you know, it's a good thing to do anyway, is the quality of the course has has become something very good. Whereas five or six years ago, the old ICT was not a good quality course. So we review these things, but not at the moment. Okay. Right. That, that's the last of the questions on the chat. I'm just glancing down at some notes. I think, you know, I think we, we covered everything that we sort of put down as being potential topics as well. Um, thanks for your patience earlier on with that little hiatus. Um, and thanks also for sort of being sort of pre present, absent but present um, this morning. Thank you for the questions. Um, they re it really does help for us to sort of help to answer in a slightly more personalised way some of the nitty gritty about how the, the life of the school works. It would be impossible for us to, to second guess exactly all those sort of questions that you might have. So, so thank you for that. Um, so finally, on, on behalf of the panel, um, and from all of us here at school, uh, great to sort of to see you in this sort of sense. I hope to see some of you around the place before the end of term. But apart from that, um, we'd just like to wish you all a very, very happy summer. I hope that if you've got get plans to get away, that they come off. Um, and it's been really great seeing you all and very, very much look forward to, to welcoming you properly um, to St Peter's in September. But for now, from here at school, it's goodbye from us and it's goodbye from them. Bye-bye. <laughs>